Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another top five. And today we're gonna to be talking about the top five next, next cloud functions. All right, so uh, I've been doing a lot of work with Nextcloud lately, and uh, it's just such a useful tool. I've been spending a lot of time learning a little bit more about it, how to build some back-end things, and uh, what I want to do here, and now this doesn't even scratch the surface of what this tool can do. Now, most of what I'm going to talk about here today, you can do on a simple cPanel. If you pick up a hosting account with a cPanel, you do the, the auto-install on a cPanel, this will cover... Uh, most of what I'm going to be talking about here today can be done on that. There's two of the things that needs a little bit more functionality, uh, but we're going to go ahead and uh, dive on into these uh, so you can kind of get your feet wet a little bit in uh, what Nextcloud can do. Number five, sync everything on your phone. Now, the reason I put this in number five is simply I don't actually do that much. Um, I'm not a guy that likes to automatically sync everything up to my devices, and uh, I prefer manual things, like manually picking up the kitty, right? All right, so I, pick, I prefer to do manual stuff, but there are times that I really like the option to go ahead and just push the button and sync everything. Like yesterday, I actually just went through and rebuilt my entire um, phone operating system. I took Lineage off and I put on Copperhead. And so I just, you know, pushed all the little synky guys, synced all that stuff on up to Nextcloud and put the new system on, reverse synced, and all my text messages are still there, all my contacts are still there, all my phone numbers are still there, everything I called, all my voicemail, I mean everything. Everything is back where it was uh, prior to that. And I mean, that's a huge time saver. And those are the things we've traditionally relied on the cloud services at either our phone operators mm -hmm or um, the, you know, the Google services, the Apple services. And with since this channel is about how to not have to be forced to use those things, that is actually the only other good way I've seen to manage your contacts from an iPhone. I mean, think about it. There is no easy way to get your contacts off of an iPhone without utilizing some form of Apple services, and they make it kind of so. So you can sync everything on your phone, uh, pictures, you know, pictures folders, your text messages, your contacts, uh, everything can, can go there. So um, that is my number five, is phone syncing. Number four, I pull this one out separate because this is the generally the only thing that I might actually sync. Well, calendars I might actually sync, depending on the types of things that I'm doing. Uh, if I'm doing jobs that requires me to stick to a rigid schedule, I would absolutely be syncing everything to this. Um, I generally don't, uh, but there's been times in my life when I've had to do that, and so syncing your contacts, syncing your calendars, this is something that can be done with Nextcloud and, and, and Android, uh, probably an iOS uh, device as well. I didn't test iOS, uh, but certainly on, on your Copperhead, when you're going Google free, Copperhead, Lineage, uh, these will all allow you to utilize the cloud, the uh, contact and the calendar sync functions. And if you go into your Nextcloud service, I, sh I should have mentioned this earlier, the reason I'm not showing you the functionality is my Nextcloud is you know full of my data and uh, you know I don't wanna share all that data. But right there from within Nextcloud, there's a calendar option. You go right in there and it's basically just like Google Calendar. I can click on a day, um, give myself a new event. Um, so let's go ahead and just do some um, uh, new special thing. We're just gonna list it just kind of as an all day there adding that onto my calendar online. Now, since I don't actually keep everything synced automatically, what I'm gonna to have to do is just go into here and auto sync my calendar. And then now when I go up into my calendar, it should show me my brand new event. So there it is, my new special thing, oh, which you can't see. Uh, but I just went ahead and put that up on the computer and it is now automatically synced. So of course, if I use those on a regular basis, just keep account sync turned on and it automatically sync it. Um, so you can sync your calendars and your contacts. Once again, just like just like your calendar, there's a contacts tab in here. You pull this down and I have my listing of all of my contacts, which is another thing I manage on my backup computer as well. But it's actually very convenient having it in the cloud because I can also sync this to the other computers, uh, things like that in my mailing lists and stuff like that. Um, so that is my number four, is the ability to sync your calendars and your contacts. Number three, Dropbox replacement. I'm not a fan of Dropbox. 
I don't like the aggressive marketing that they did early on. Um, I just wasn't a huge fan of the company. Um, I won't use them. Now, of course, with my you know clients that I have, oftentimes might need to give me something. I say, hey, just as long as I can get it in a way that I don't need to create an account from Dropbox, that's fine. As of so far, that is the case. It would not surprise me if that function goes away as they move into their IPO. But right here on my NextCloud install, on any file that I have on my system, I can actually just click on the file. And, um, well, not if it's one that it can read. <laughs> I can just select the file. And then there's a little share button down here. I can share this with anybody in my contact list. I can share it with anybody that is also in my next cloud install, which is uh, writing collaborators. Or I have the option just get a share link. And then I can just take that link, email it, you know, pass it over to, by email or any other way, just share that link with somebody. And then that link can either be a public link, they can just simply, whoever has the link can download it, or it can be password protected. I can set an expiration date so it's only shareable for a certain period of time. I can select an option to allow that person to edit that file. So there are a lot of different things that, uh, that one could do inside of here. Uh, in addition to that option with your sharing of, of your uh, of your items you also have the ability to have a, is called a, just a random upload folder so a random upload folder is uh, this one is set in such a way uh, it is shared in such a way that a person can anonymously upload files to it so if you happen to have this link and so for example I might take this this build put this build up on my server for people who need to get files to me and just simply point a URL to the link to that folder. Send them the URL to that link, make it password protected or not, and then allow them to either just do file file drop or allow them to uh, upload and edit files or just allow them to simply read the files. All those same functions inside of a simple Dropbox. We have the ability to do that. Once again, I can set an expiration date and I can password protect the whole directory. That will give you a nice interface. You can go right to there and you can upload a file. It's not constrained by the same constraints that a standard PHP upload would have. It runs some scripts so it never times out. So as long as there's server space there, you can upload the files. So that is an excellent, excellent function. So now I have a way that I can pass this item to my clients to say, oh, you have a lot of pictures. Just go ahead and click on this link, upload the files to there, and I'll get them. Very simple, very easy. Google, Dropbox, other big company free. Number two is your video conferencing. Now these last two, number one and number two, these both require some extra work that's not necessarily included just on the basic uh, install on a cPanel. Um, for this one, you actually have to build a stun server. Not all that complicated, uh, but once you have it up and running, you can do video conferencing all across the world. Complete end-to-end -end encryption, uh, complete peer-to-peer. -peer. So it's only connecting me and my contact through my own SSL, and it uses the stun server just to make sure the connection goes on. And so, Utilizing this as a video conferencing, it's very much like uh, Google Hangouts and uh, close to uh, Jitsi and uh, there was another one that was um, um, like participate in or, or something, I forget what it is. Um, this is actually the teleconferencing is the last, uh, the, the, pro, the system that we used with my last uh, video with uh, Total OS Today on our uh, Linux for Newbies video, we used my entire NextCloud video conferencing platform. And, uh, you know, so that was recording, you know, recording and streaming um, HD with video conferencing back and forth on my NextCloud uh, replacement. So fairly simple to set up, behaves like Google Hangouts. There's a chat function built in uh, as long as well as the video conferencing. As of right now, there's some limitations. You can't put a link in there, but there are other ways we can deal with links as well. Things like that. And the number one is your um, online documents. So this is a replacement for Google Docs, a replacement for Office 365. Um, I think if I gave somebody a public link to this, they could also edit and use the document. I'm pretty sure that is the case. I've never tested that functionality. Um, but we actually use this as to collaborate on writing projects. So as we're collaborating writing projects with each other, um, we can each edit the documents, we can upload the documents, paste the documents back and forth, things like that.
And so um, I have the ability to just any document that is a spreadsheet, a office document, a presentation, anything that is in that basic suite, I can open that up and I can edit everything on that. This once again requires setting up a Calibora or a code server, um, a little bit more intensive than the stun server, but once it's up, it runs great. So I have mine set up with uh, all of the MS core fonts uh, so that we can you know, make sure our documents are, are going well well, and the system works very well. It's a very good system. Um, and so online documents is my number one use for Nextcloud. So thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you'd like to help support Switch to Linux, you can check out our website, switchtolinux.com forward slash support. That's all of the current ways to help support the channel. Uh, we have over there uh, Amazon links there and in the description below. There's a PayPal link over there on the website. Uh, if you are uh, interested in Patreon, you can check out patreon.com forward slash Tom M for information on the Patreon page. And I do have some things available if you want a mouse pad, coffee cup, t-shirt, anything like that to help support the channel. You can check out shop.switch2linux.com. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.